Economic Environment The economic environment is a dynamic interplay of factors that influence and are influenced by business activities. It's characterized by scarcity, where unlimited wants clash with finite resources. This necessitates choices and decisions, leading to opportunity costs. Key Concepts Economic scarcity, simply put is, limited resources versus unlimited wants. The term economic tends to be used in a variety of ways and contexts to describe certain aspects of human behavior, ranging from activities such as producing, distributing and consuming, to the idea of frugality in the use of a resource being economical with the truth. Modern definitions stress how such behavior, and the institutions in which it takes place e.g. households, firms, governments, banks, are concerned with the satisfaction of human needs and wants through the transformation of resources into goods and services which are consumed by society. These processes are said to take place under conditions of economic scarcity. Opportunity cost, choices, have to be made by both individuals and society concerning priorities in the use of resources, and every choice inevitably involves a sacrifice, i.e. foregoing an alternative. Economists describe the sacrifice as the opportunity cost or real cost of the decision that is taken. The value of the next best alternative foregone. Economic systems, from a societal point of view the existence of economic scarcity poses three serious problems concerning the use of resources. 1. What to use the available resources for. That is, what goods and services should be produced, or not produced, with the resources, sometimes described as the guns v butter argument. 2. How best to use those resources. For example, in what combinations, using what techniques and what methods. 3. How best to distribute the goods and services produced. That is, who gets what, how much and on what basis. Normally, the main approach to resource allocation tend to be predetermined by the economic system adopted. These are the various economic systems. 1. Centrally planned economy. 2. Capitalist or market economy. 3. Mixed economic system. Let's explain them. Centrally planned economy. In this economy, government controls resources and means of production. Under this arrangement, the state typically chones and or controls the main economic resources. Establishes priorities in the use of those resources. It sets output targets for businesses which are largely under state ownership and or control. Directs resources in an effort to achieve these predetermined targets, and seeks to coordinate production in such a way as to ensure consistency between output and input demands. In such an environment, the traditional entrepreneurial skills of efficient resource management, price setting and risk taking have little, if any, scope for development and managers behave essentially as technicians and bureaucrats, administering decisions largely made elsewhere. Firms, in effect, are mainly servants of the state and their activities are conditioned by social and political considerations, rather than by the needs of the market, although some market activity normally occurs in planned economies, especially in agriculture and a number of private services. Accordingly, businesses and their employees are not fully sensitized to the needs of the consumer and as a result quality and choice, where it exists, may suffer, particularly where incentives to improve efficiency and performance are negligible. Equally, the system tends to encourage bribery and corruption and the development of a substantial black market, with differences in income, status and political influence being an important determinant of individual consumption and of living standards. Capitalist or free market economy, in this economy, private individuals control resources and means of production. Private ownership of means of production and market forces dictate resource allocation. In other words, whereas in the centrally planned economy, the state controls most economic decisions, in the capitalist economy the key economic agencies are private individuals, sometimes called households and firms, and these interact in free markets, through a system of prices, to determine the allocation of resources. The key features of this type of economic system are as follows. Resources are in private ownership and the individuals owning them are free to use them as they wish. Firms, also in private ownership, are equally able to make decisions on production, free from state interference. No blueprint, or master plan, exists to direct production and consumption. Decisions on resource allocation are the result of a decentralized system of markets and prices, in which the decisions of millions of consumers and hundreds of thousands of firms are automatically coordinated. The consumer is sovereign, i.e. dictates the pattern of supply and hence the pat, turn of resource allocation. In short, the three problems of what to produce, how to produce and how to distribute are solved by market forces. A mixed economic system, here both government control of resources and private ownership of means of production are at play. The economic conditions. 
important economic conditions such as inflation, economic growth, unemployment, balance of payments are some of the economic factors in the economic environment that affect business organization operations. In what follows, we shall briefly discuss some of these factors. Inflation. Inflation is usually defined as an upward and persistent movement in the general level of prices over a given period of time, it can also be characterized as a fall in the value of money. A persistent increase in the general price level. Rising prices may also affect businesses by encouraging employees to seek higher wages in order to maintain or increase their living standards. Where firms agree to such wage increases, the temptation, of course, is to pass this on to the consumer in the form of a price rise, especially if demand looks unlikely to be affected to any great extent. Should this process occur generally in the economy, the result may be a wages-slash-prices inflationary spiral, in which wage increases push up prices which push up wage increases which further push up prices and so on. Economic growth. Growth is an objective shared by governments and organizations alike. It is the increase in the production of goods and services over time. Where growth prospects for the economy look good, business confidence tends to increase, and this is often reflected in increased levels of investment and stock holding and ultimately in levels of employment. Unemployment, this is the portion of the labor force without jobs. As with growth and inflation, unemployment levels tend to be measured at regular intervals e.g. monthly, quarterly, annually, and the figures are often adjusted to take into account seasonal influences e.g. school leavers entering the job market. In addition, the statistics usually provide information on trends in long-term unemployment, areas of skill shortage and on international comparisons, as well as sectoral changes within the economy. All of these indicators provide clues to the current state of the economy and to the prospects for businesses. Balance of payments. A country's balance of payments is essentially the net balance of credits, earnings, and debits, payments, arising from its international trade over a given period of time. That is, the record of a country's transactions with the rest of the world. Where credits exceed debits a balance of payments surplus exists, the opposite is described as a deficit. Understandably governments tend to prefer either equilibrium in the balance of payments or surpluses, rather than deficits. Particular emphasis tends to be given to the balance of payments on current account, which measures imports and exports of goods and services and is thus seen as an indicator of the competitiveness of an economy's firms and industries. Sustained current account surpluses tend to suggest favorable trading conditions, which can help to boost growth, increase employment and investment and create a general feeling of confidence amongst the business community. Public borrowing, governments borrowing to finance deficits. The overriding concern over high levels of public borrowing tends to be focused on 1. Its impact on interest rates, given that higher interest rates tend to be needed to attract funds from private sector uses to public sector uses. 2. The impact of high interest rates on consumption and investment and hence on the prospects of businesses. 3. The danger of the public sector crowding out the private sector's search for funds for investment. 4. The opportunity cost of debt interest, especially in terms of other forms of public spending. 5. The general lack of confidence in the markets about the government's ability to control the economy and the likely effect this might have on inflation, growth and the balance of payments. A stable exchange rate, the value of one currency relative to another. A country's currency has two values, an internal value and an external value. Internally, its value is expressed in terms of the goods and services it can buy and hence it is affected by changes in domestic prices. Externally, its value is expressed as an exchange rate which governs how much of another country's currency it can purchase e.g. £1 equals $2 or $1 equals N1, 400. To this extent, schemes which seek to fix exchange rates within predetermined levels tend to have the support of the business community, which prefers predictability to uncertainty where trading conditions are concerned. Government policies. A fiscal policy, our government's use of spending and taxation to influence the economy. G monetary policy, our central bank's actions to manage interest rates and money supply. Role of financial institutions. Financial institutions facilitate the flow of funds between lenders and borrowers, playing a crucial role in economic activity. Like banks, investment firms, and insurance companies channel savings into investments, providing capital for businesses. In the case of financial markets, the stock exchanges and bond markets facilitate capital formation and risk management. The economic environment is complex and ever-changing. Economic factors affect the ability of business to meet its objectives. Businesses prosper during good economic conditions while poor economic conditions hinder their activities. The nature of economic system adopted, the quality of monetary and fiscal policies affects the growth and development of business organizations.
Understanding its key components is essential for businesses to make informed decisions and thrive. Technological environment. Various external factors can impact the ability of a business or investment to achieve its strategic goals and objectives. External factors in technology impact business operations. Changes in technology affect how a company will do business. A business may have to dramatically change their operating strategy as a result of changes in the technological environment. Technology is defined as the sum of knowledge of the means and methods of producing goods and services, Penguin Dictionary of Economics. It is increasingly science-based, encompassing things like chemistry, physics and electronics, and refers to the organization of production as well as the actual techniques of production itself. Technological change leads to the introduction of new products, changes in the methods and organization of production, changes in the quality of resources and products, new ways of distributing the product and new ways of storing and disseminating information. Let's discuss technological change and its impact on business and by extension, the economy. In the past decade, technology has undergone profound transformations, reshaping both existing businesses and creating new industries. Let's explore several key advancements and their implications. Information technology. Advances in information technology have revolutionized business operations, enabling efficient data collection, analysis, and transmission. From enhanced computer-aided design, CAD, facilitating product innovation, this is the process of digitally creating design simulations of real-world goods and products in 2D or 3D, complete with scale, precision, and physics properties, to optimize and perfect the design, often in a collaborative manner, before manufacturing. Information technology has also streamlined administration through computerized systems, of course facilitating businesses to adapt to new technological landscapes. Communication has also evolved with tools like email, mobile phones, and video conferencing, allowing for global connectivity and remote work capabilities. Other technological developments. Beyond IT, emerging fields like biotechnology and new materials have catalyzed further innovation. These sectors are pivotal in enhancing product development cycles and profitability across various industries. Additionally, advancements in energy technologies, such as superconductors and solar energy, promise sustainable solutions for future energy needs. Technology and investment. In economics, capital has a special meaning, it refers to all man-made resources which are used in production. Capital is usually divided into working capital and fixed capital. Working capital consists of the stocks of raw materials and components used in producing things. Fixed capital consists of buildings, plant and machinery. The main difference between the two is that fixed capital gives a flow of services over a long period of time, while working capital needs to be replaced on a regular basis. Because of its nature, working capital is much more mobile than fixed capital, that is, it can be used for other purposes much more easily. Capital is a stock of goods used in the production process, a stock which is continually being used and therefore needing to be replaced. This stock provides a flow of services for the production process. Capital includes a wide diversity of items, including factory premises, machinery, raw materials in stock, transport vehicles, and partly finished goods. As well as these, there is what is often called social capital, which refers to capital that is owned by the community such as schools and hospitals. There is also spending on the infrastructure, which is important to all businesses rather than being linked to one particular business. The main components of this are transport, energy, water and information. The transportation system is obviously very important to any economy. Road, rail, air and water are used to transport goods, services and raw materials. The same is true for energy and water. The information distribution system is also part of the infrastructure and would include telephone systems and the post. The increase in the stock of capital over time is called investment. Investment will serve to increase the productive potential of the firm and the economy. Investment usually refers to the purchase of new assets, as the purchase of secondhand assets merely represents a change in ownership and therefore does not represent a change in productive potential. Investment is important for the firm as it is a mechanism for growth, it is an integral part of the innovation process and can have disastrous results for a firm if an investment goes wrong. Generally, the higher the level of investment in a country, the higher will be the level of economic growth. Capital investment plays a crucial role in integrating technological advancements into production processes. There is an important relationship between investment and technological change which runs in both directions. Investment can form the basis for improvements in technology while improved technology which brings about new ways of producing goods will lead to greater investment. 
For private firms the main determinants of the level of investment will be the rate of technological change and the scope for extra profit as a result of these changes. Innovation and Technology There are two types of innovation that can occur as a result of technological change, product innovation and process innovation. Product innovation is the development of new products, like the microprocessor, which will have far-reaching effects on business. New products impact upon the industrial structure of a country, as new industries grow and old industries disappear. This in turn will lead to changes in the occupational structure of the workforce, as we have seen. It has even had the effect of reducing the benefits large firms derive from economies of scale in cases where the technological change can be exploited by small firms as well as it can by large firms. Another example of product innovation which has affected the level of competition in the market is the development of quartz watches, which allowed Japan to enter the market and compete with Switzerland. Process innovation, on the other hand, refers to changes that take place in the production process, like the introduction of assembly line production in the manufacture of cars. The two types of innovation are related, as the above examples show. The microprocessor, product innovation, which is a new product, has led to massive changes in the way that production and offices operate, process innovation. Not all innovation is technological in nature, for example, changes in fashion and clothing are not technological. Innovative activity is important for all industry whether manufacturing or non-manufacturing. In some industries, for example pharmaceuticals, computers, innovation is essential if firms wish to remain competitive. Research and development. Research and development are central to technological progress, with both private and public sectors contributing to applied and theoretical advancements. Research and development investments aim to develop new products and improve existing ones, bolstering technological capabilities and market competitiveness. Limits to technological change. While technological advancements offer substantial benefits, they also pose challenges. Issues such as environmental impact and unemployment in declining industries require strategic management and policy interventions. Balancing technological growth with sustainability and social impact is critical for long-term economic stability. In summary therefore, the integration of advanced technologies is imperative for business survival and growth. By embracing and innovating with new technologies, businesses can enhance efficiency, reduce costs, and improve product quality, thereby ensuring sustainable competitive advantages in global markets. Technological advances are catalysts for innovation, offering new products, efficient production methods, and enhanced management tools. Embracing technology through research and development is pivotal for organizational success and adaptation to evolving market dynamics. If you have learned from these videos, click the notification button. Please give it a thumbs up so that others can see it or will see it. Always remember to subscribe if you have not done so. Until next time, keep learning.